Okay, today we're going to unbox and review the Roku Roku 2 XS. It's a streaming player. Um, it comes with a two month subscription to Hulu Plus, an HDMI cable in this case, uh, 1080p capability, uh, free full game of Angry Birds, which is kind of cool. Uh, it says that uh, it's the easiest way to stream on your TV. But uh, I'm going to take it apart, well, unbox it for you, uh, show you the features, and then I'm going to test it out against my Sony streaming uh, DVD player and see how it compares. And uh, I'll report back to you. Thanks. Okay, first of all, the easiest way to open this packaging is to cut along the seam, cut right along the red where the red and white meet, meet on the box. I use the blade at about that much of an angle. Or, or sorry, a length. Don't go any deeper than that. You don't want to cut the actual Roku itself. Uh, it's in the center anyway, so there's little chance of that. Uh, once again, be safe. This is, you know, these are very sharp knives, and this is very hard cardboard. So always cut against. Uh, sorry, cut away from yourself. So here we go. Okay. Let me... Well, there's the uh, box torn open for you. Inside you'll see another box. Um, Hulu uh, Plus two month subscription card. Uh, as you can see, offer valid for new Hulu uh, Plus subscribers only. I'm a, already a current one, so it doesn't really apply to me. So maybe I'll put it on uh, eBay or something. Uh, I'll give it to a friend. Then we get what looks like to be a six foot HDMI cable. Um, which again, if you don't have one, really nice that you get one. It's a very thick one too, which is a plus, it's a bonus. Then inside we have yet another box. And it is the Roku 2 XS Stream and Rock and Roll. Now, I'm going to break the seals. There's one on top. One on the bottom. And uh, as you can see, you plug it in to your TV. It hooks up to Wi-Fi or Ethernet, depends on what you got, what you, what's available to you. And it says enjoy. It has a motion-based game, so the uh, remote control is actually uh, got motion detection on it. And I believe the remote control is uh, uh, wireless. In other words, it has a, a radio remote, not a infrared remote, which makes it work without you having to point it at the box itself. Okay, so. Next step. Open it up. It says 600 channels. Games galore. All right. There's that. Manual, of course. Uh, the Roku, which is uh, extremely small, as you can see. It's got a nice, uh, well, pretty sweet packaging. And uh, the actual device is just incredibly tiny. Uh, as you can see, it's got an HDMI, a micro SD port, uh, audio visual out. Uh, I don't think we'll be using that. I'll be using HDMI, Ethernet, and uh, power. And above is a little dimple or a little hole for um, reset. Okay, take the remote out. It looks like a pretty basic remote, um, as you can see, wrapped in plastic, of course. Um, I'll leave it more or less like that. I don't really need to get all crazy on the packaging. And like I said, nothing fancy there. Uh, and it is a wireless radio remote. It doesn't. You don't have to point it at the device and uh, to actually get it to work. It doesn't have infrared. So, let's open up the rest of the package, see what we get. Well, got two batteries for the remote, a audio-visual cable, which I don't believe I'll be using. I have HDMI. I might hook it up to see what the difference is, but uh, you know it won't be the same quality. Okay, packaging, of course. And underneath power supply for the device and another 
little manual with warnings and so on and so forth. So, let me put all this stuff out. Here's the Roku player, the power supply, the wireless remote, HDMI cable, AV cable and batteries for the remote, manual, and subscription for Hulu Plus. Alright, next we're going to hook it up and see how it works. Sorry, one small update. I showed you all these connectors, the micro SD, HDMI, AV out, Ethernet power and reset. I didn't show you the USB port, which is uh, another plus. Okay, and uh, this is just the label they put on it. Not sure why, but fabric and the Roku XS. Roku 2, sorry, Roku 2 XS. Okay, first big plus as you can see is how tiny the device is. Okay, here's a USB, two USB keys on top of it. I don't think it'll fit, oh, it might fit a third one on top. Uh, as you can see, my Wii is over here, uh, remote controllers and stuff are here, and it's a very tiny device. Next thing, remote. Nice and simple. Okay, so I've hooked it up the way the manual uh, describes. I put the HDMI cable in the back, as you can see right there. Then I put the power uh, cord into the back as well, but I haven't plugged it into the wall yet, because that's just recommendation in the manual. Next thing is to put the batteries in the remote. I'll show you that. There's a little unlock button there. Unlock it. Pull the door down. The door comes off. Right side, positive side up, which is the one with the little nub on the top. And negative side down, which is the flat side. Left side, exact opposite. Negative side up with the flat on the top and the nub on the bottom, which is the positive. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yes, you can see it. There's a, there's a sync button on it too as well here. So I'm going to leave the door off for now. As you can see, it's flashing. Okay. The next thing they say to do is power up the Roku. And that's what I'm going to do by plugging it into the power box. Okay, power light is flashing, and I'll zoom you over here to the actual screen. And the Roku is up. Okay, after the bouncing Roku sign came up, um, this is what you get. And my remote has stopped flashing so we don't have that issue anymore so I'm gonna assume that means it's working let's see and it is alright next thing I gotta do is hook up my wireless okay and I don't broadcast my uh, SSID as that's not a good idea as you can see a lot of other people do so you don't want uh, you don't want people knowing what that is anyway, so. Okay. So, my mat work is not sure, shown. Ensure that your Roku player is within range of your wireless router. If you need to, you may, if you need your wireless MAC address, it's blah, 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 blah. All right, so. Now I get the option at the bottom left where it's, sorry, bottom right where it says scan again or private network SSID. That's what I'm going to do. For you, it's it's according to your setup but I'm going to do this uh, I'm going to plug in my SSID and when I'm done that I'll, I'll uh, resume the uh, um, the video I'm liking this a lot actually. It, it's uh, very easy to navigate the, the uh, keyboard. So there's my SSID. Um, and that's all we need to enter here. 
So then I'm going to hit OK. Oh, actually, if you look at the bottom right, there's a done. Navigate down to the done. Hit OK. Is your wireless network secure? Yes, it is. And now it's going to ask for my password. I'll enter that in and uh, start the video after that. Okay, looking good. Connected. All right, uh, an update's available, so we're going to do that. I'm going to stop it here for time's sake, show you what happened at the end. Okay, as you can see, the update's almost finished. It says it's going to restart. We'll see how that goes. Restarting now. There's the dancing Roku again. About a minute, first time I rebooted it, so this will probably be another minute. I always do the updates. It's up to you whether you do it or not, but there's a reason they put them out. 54 seconds. 57. There we go. Okay, now it's asking me to go on my computer, go to uh, Roku link, and put the code in. Okay, so I've entered the code in and uh, after entering the code in at that web address on my computer it asked me to create an account. Uh, just follow the uh, prompts when making the account and then this uh, will happen. Your channels will update. Okay, we're done. It says let's start streaming so let's go do it. Hit OK. And what do I have for options? Roku, welcome to the new Roku channel store, Netflix, Amazon, Voodoo, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Blockbusters on the Man. Pretty cool. And you can add more to this as you go along. Angry Birds. So let's go to Voodoo here just quickly so we can do a speed test. Let's do a browse. In here somewhere is there it is. Go to info and settings, and then you'll see a network speed test. Click on that. Start the test. Let's see if we get our score. Now on my Sony player, it goes to nine and above and just stays there. So we'll see here. Not quite the same. We're a little slower, but 6.75, still not bad. There we go, up to nine. That should ensure we get 1080p. HDX quality. Okay, looks like it's good. I'm going to go back to settings. Oops. Settings. Now that was wireless, so that's great. Uh, let's go home. Okay, so. I'm going to wrap this review up by showing you a bunch of channels I installed, which is a major bonus in this unit, I think. Um, there's two types of channels. You can get uh, channels that are basically free or paid for that are in the channel store. Um, but there's a subgroup of channels called uh, private channels. And um, I'll put the, the uh, web page that has a database of those on, on it in the description. But uh, let's go through them here. As you can see, Amazon, Voodoo, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Blockbuster on Demand, which is a big plus, okay? Because most systems don't have this Blockbuster. I've been asked, uh, people who had Vizio, I had a Vizio and it uh, upgraded one day and I lost this, this uh, um, 
this channel. So I'm just going to open it up here for a second, make sure it's still working here. Okay, yeah, still there. Sign up for free. Um, I don't need to, but it's still working. So I'm going to go back to the home menu here. Okay, back here, um, as you can see, Popcorn Flex, Disney, you know, Angry Birds, if you want to play them, it comes with the game, it comes with the uh, Roku, uh, this is the XS, um, 2 HD, and tune in, I love, iHeartRadio, I love, Blaze TV, if you want to pay for it, it's a, it's a subscription. Some are subscriptions, some are not. Uh, Smithsonian Channel is great. Uh, Pandora, Weather, Epics, Chow for Food, PopFlix. Now the USB media player, it's okay, but uh, this device is quite limited in, in its uh, ability of what type of media it will play through the USB port. So I'll, uh, wrap, it, I'll wrap that up and tell you which types it can. Uh, it can play the video in video. It can play a format called MKV, uh, which is H2, sorry, H.264, MP4 in H.264, music, AAC, and MP3, which is okay. Photo is uh, JPEGs and PNG format. Okay, so I'm going to do a wrap up of this whole thing. Uh, here's Drivecast, just keep going, webcams, and just hundreds of different types of shows on here and uh, games as well um, the iTunes podcast which is great um, I mean BBC Worldwide News 24 hours I, I believe it's live so that's a great plus um, nowhere traffic just traffic cams so as you can see you can customize it any way you want uh, another plus is that uh, you can add more memory to this using a micro SD uh, SIM into it uh, or chip and uh, it'll take large ones I believe up to 16 gigs but um, don't quote me on that I know it'll take a 2 gigger um, and the only reason for that memory upgrade is to upgrade the memory on the actual device you can't watch movies off it. you can't put anything on it basically if you need more memory you just take a, a micro SD um, chip into the SD slot and off you go so that's a big plus so let's uh, let's go through there's you know basic amounts are the uh, all the channels I'm gonna go through the major pluses I find in this unit ability to, one of the things it can do is it can uh, stream Time Warner cable channels if you have a Time Warner cable subscription and it allows you to do so. You need a certain one, I'm not sure which one. Um, major plus, the play feature that plays the next episode in a series. So in Hulu, if you're watching uh, Amazing Race and you're done at the end of a, uh, uh, an episode, well, on my Sony, the uh, Sony BDP-BX58, I would have to, it's a DVD streaming uh, box, I would have to go back and go through the menu and choose the next episode and play. Well, with this unit, it just goes on to the next episode. So it just can, you know, continuously shows you the whole season episode by episode, which is a big plus for me. Uh, I can't stress enough how beautiful the radio remote is. Okay? You don't have to point it at the device. You, don't, you, can, you can press a button from anywhere within, I don't know, 50 feet or so, and it will work. Uh, without a clear line of sight to the unit, which is a big plus. If you want to put this away somewhere, out of the way, hidden, it doesn't matter. It's a radio remote. It'll go through whatever casing or, or, or a reasonable uh, casing you put it in. So that's a big plus. Um, size of the unit is another big plus. It's the size of, a, a would say, a hockey puck, if not just a little bit bigger. Um, the ability to upgrade the memory cheaply, I already talked about that, and add more features and channels, and more, um, more channels come every, you know, every so often, so that's a big plus. Uh, 
the, you know, Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn Radio, I love that. Uh, search, the search features are very intuitive. So if you go to the channel store and, you, and you're doing a search, it's straight up. Um, and, you know, basically start typing it in and it will fill it in on the other side, which is a great thing, right? So here's, you know, the Amazon Cloud play, Player, a Time Warner Cable. And as you can see, the icon is a large, which is something my wife likes because then she can, say, she can see them without having to really strain her eyesight to look at it. So as you can see, you know, it works great, okay? So um, what's another thing that's awesome about this thing? Oh, yeah, let's show you the other search feature. It is right there. So, it reads the results, as you can see, The Amazing Race. And let's say I want to look at, um, I don't know, what's, what's a program we want to look at? How about The Hunger Games? Let's go there. Now, what would be nice is a, is a, is a QWERTY keyboard on the uh, actual uh, remote. So as you can see, it's starting to populate this size, this side, right? So go here. I don't even know if I'm naming it correctly, but um, yeah, a QWERTY keyboard would be a big plus if you're listening out there, uh, Roku. Um, and I don't mean just on the screen, I mean on the remote. So there's the Hunger Games. Just go over here, boom, right? Off you go. So, um, basically, I, I really find the uh, search features fast and easy and nice. Uh, let's just see. Uh, I've gone, gone to the support site, and the support site's awesome. Uh, you can Google the support, and, and or you can just go to the support site and search it yourself there. But either way, it's... Uh, very well laid out and very helpful. Uh, the ability to play games on a device, that's another nice feature. Okay, so I'm going to put the links for the uh, channel guides, a few that I found. I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, so those are the, the bonuses in the, in the unit. Uh, here's the, you know, minor downside on the unit. Number one thing that bothers me, it doesn't have a power on and off button, which it's kind of an annoyance to me. Um, if you shut off the TV, I think it senses that and it, and it goes into a power saving mode or an off mode. So, you know, again, one of my little pet peeves, I like to be able to turn the device on and off with a power button. But you don't have to with this, this unit. Um, let's see. Again, I mentioned already that uh, USB media support is limited in the sense of uh, the type of files it can play. Like I said, video is MKV. Uh, that's in uh, H.264 and MP4 H.264 music AAC format and MP3 format and photo is a JPEG and PNG. Now, video quality is very good. It's not as good as the Sony uh, BDPX, sorry, BDP-BX58 unit that I have as I use as a reference, but it's barely noticeably different, okay? Um, I, I noticed some uh, some of the gradients in, in, in uh, light fades and so on, but it's very minor and you hardly even notice it. Uh, the reason I notice it is because it's better on the Sony and you can you, you can't even see it on the Sony. So uh, I don't know if that's a color depth issue or what, but trust me, you probably won't even notice it. Okay, the difference between the two I'd say is about seven percent in quality video quality. Okay. Um, so, and as far as uh, Wi-Fi performance goes, I don't see any problem with it at all. Uh, it gets the same signal strength as the Sony, which I use as my reference um, box because it has a very good antenna on it. Uh, the Sony's a BDP-BX58, which I also did a review on. So, all in all, for the, I believe, 80 or... Uh, I'm not sure how much I paid for. I think it's in the, in the $80, $90 range. This, uh, this Roku is a pretty awesome uh, deal. Okay? So I would recommend it. I would recommend it to a friend, and I would recommend it to you. 
Try it out. See if you like it. Um, I certainly do, and I, I, I'm going to keep it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.